want to share um, that today is uh, International Holocaust Remembrance Day. What I'd like to do is begin with a recognition that uh, I learned from um, Dan Hotchkiss uh, in a writing that he did for the Alban Institute, where he said that institutions, churches, synagogues, make a mistake when they forget that their biggest constituency isn't present. The biggest constituency are future members. On International Holocaust Remembrance Day, how powerful to realize that we, we, are the future, we are the greatest constituency, and we are the ones who bear witness to the past, to all of our pasts, to our collective pasts, and today we say for the six million. We're learning Parshat Bo, the third Torah portion in the book of Exodus, how intense to think about the story that we have inherited, that we tell. If you look at the way the story unfolds, it's a story that we know from every Passover Seder, every time you pass a mezuzah, when we put on tefillin on our arms and on our heads, when we say the Shema, we speak about it when we walk, we speak about it when we lay down, when we sit down. The story of the Exodus is meant to be told over and over so that generations to come and the whole world will know it. The drama is increased with every plague. It comes to its highest point when it comes to its lowest point, the bottom of the Red Sea. And here we are, millennia later, still telling that story so that we can learn the lessons of the past. And we are told by philosophers and historians that those who forget the past are condemned to repeat it. We repeat the story of the Exodus multiple times a day because human dignity and liberation is a religious mandate. And the way that we do that as Jews is by bearing testimony, both to our ancient history and to the more recent history in the middle of the 20th century. Genocide. Genocide in Egypt. Genocide in Eastern Europe. And we are called to recognize that history does repeat itself, and we are called to bear testimony of our own suffering for the sake of the world. And when we look at the drama in Parshat Bo, the final three plagues, and we look at the language where God hardens Pharaoh's heart, you say to yourself, or at least I do, how can I hold Pharaoh accountable? God made all this happen. In fact, God said it was going to happen. I've come to believe that the intensity of the story is a decision. That if you believe God wrote the Torah, that's a decision that God makes. If you believe that people in collective form told the stories over and over, and the Torah is a composite document of holy souls yearning for sense and meaning and God. Regardless of where you think the Torah came from, how powerful it is for us to know that here we are, inheritors of the most intense story told with increasing drama. Here we are bearing testimony about the most dramatic story, the exodus from Egypt, the most dramatic story, the rebirth of our people from the ashes of the Shoah. And the way that we tell it, the way that we give it its true story, its true depth, its terrible color, is a way of ensuring that the story will be told that we will not forget. How effective it has been to tell our story, to bear testimony, how incredible it has been. So incredible that the Jewish day of remembering the Shoah, which happens right after Pesach, right after Passover, is not actually the day that we are marking today. International Holocaust Remembrance Day marks the day that the Soviets actually liberated Auschwitz. When someone else showed up for Jews. On Yom HaShoah V'Hagvura, the Jewish day of remembrance for the Shoah, it is a day of resistance 
Jewish resistance against anti-Semitism. It is the day that we mark the Warsaw Ghetto upri Uprising, where Jews fought back. Mordechai Nalevich and a band of warriors redefined Jewish identity by fighting back. Today's a day that the world pretends that it showed up on time. But where the world now takes responsibility, please God, so that never again, for no people, will there be the kind of dehumanizing assault that the world allowed, and we know all too well. Elie Wiesel, of blessed memory, showed up in Darfur because he said, we cannot say never again if we don't mean it. And so far, I think the jury is out. But on this day, on this day, where we mark the liberation of the camps by the Allies, on this day, where we say never again, because every day we say never again, we are here. We bear testimony. We are the future stakeholders of our world. And for the sakes of our children, by which I mean all children, we make sure to mark each other's dignity. We give each other the full flesh of living color by telling a story that needs to be told over and over again. We are told about the exodus from Egypt, that we are obligated we are commanded to see ourselves as if we ourselves were redeemed from Egypt. So too, we are told in the destruction of the temple thousands of years later, and now thousands of years ago, that those who remember the destruction of Jerusalem will be part of its great rebuilding. How might we phrase it when it comes to the Shoah? Perhaps, and this is only an attempt, we could say something like, because we are committed to remembering and never forgetting, when the world closed its eyes to dehumanization and an extermination campaign against the Jews, we will never close our eyes. We will never go gently. We will always be strong. And through our strength, we will always stand for every human being every image of God who is worthy of protection in life. That's full color. That's acting like a stakeholder in humanity. That is channeling the divine essence that every human being is created in for the sake of every other. That's what it is to not forget. That's what it is to remember. So on this complicated day, friends, on this beautiful Erev Shabbat, on this crisp day here in New York, and wherever you find yourselves, may we be blessed to feel our life force surging within us, to allow our conscience to be activated, to remember the things we wish never happened, so that we never again, never again, witness or God forbid suffer those things that we remember today. May the memory of the six million be for a blessing. May we, their children, act in blessed ways. May all humanity be safe. May it be a good Shabbos everywhere around the world. Amen. Let's sing our way into a good one.
Zone friends. See you on Monday.